just like that. It's time for our weekly roundup of all the things Lady just ain't gonna do this week. Number one, Jerry Springer is dead at 79. Now look, I was a little hesitant to include this in this week's roundup because who are we kidding? He was a talk show host who both popularized the genre of trashy daytime television and on top of that, the sensationalism was often portrayed by those who have been left out and left behind in our society. You know, Black people, women, trans people, all that. Now, you could say that this was the building blocks for the rise of somebody like Donald Trump. Create the illusion of a serious format, but lace it with drama and half-truths. Geraldo Rivera, he was of the same ilk, and I believe he has now crossed all the way over to the dark side, honey. Now, in any case, Springer's talk show shenanigans were a far cry from his roots, working on political campaigns for Robert Kennedy, serving as a mayor of Cincinnati, Ohio for a year, even serving as a member of the Cincinnati City Council for seven years. I mean, hell, he was even a regular and the largest contributor to the Hamilton County Democratic Party for the better part of like 20 years. Now, I'm old enough to remember when Jerry Springer and the show was actually a real unscripted talk show that took on like real topics like homelessness and shit. I can also remember, though, when the show took a turn for the dramatic, encouraging fighting on stage with Steve Wilkos. Remember Steve? Steve getting in the middle of those fights. Now, it was always somebody cheating with somebody else, somebody in a dispute about are you the father type shit. And ultimately, by the time the show ended, They were basically unabashed about showing how scripted that shit actually was. There's still like one episode that I will always remember where there was these two women. They were going at it over some crusty ass dude and they started squabbing. Right. And one of the ladies pulled the other lady's wig off while screaming, I got your hair, bitch. I got your hair, bitch. (laughs) I will never forget this shit. And I still chuckle about it because it reminds me of like a street fight that might break out that always ends in laughter. And later, the retelling of it while you're with your girls in the nail shop is just fucking epic. But today, it's hard for me to laugh at those things when I realize what it created for us, how the lines got blurred between fake and real and nobody ever bothered to like use a disclaimer like they do on cigarettes. Like, hey, this is purely for your entertainment. This actually isn't, you know, real. So this, too, is Jerry Springer's legacy. Condolences to his family and friends. Other things Lady Ain't Gonna Do this week, Kim Fox running for re-election. Now, one of these days, I want to talk about how when you put somebody in office, you got to have their whole fucking back, too. But hey, you live and you learn. And this is something our movement needs to learn, like, with a quickness, if we're really serious about building power. Anyway, Kim Fox announced that she will not be running for re-election in Chicago after years of straight-up harassment by the Chicago Police Department and a lack of support from former mayor, mm -hmm, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who really didn't have a coherent vision herself for not only how to run a city, but how to get them suits the right size. I mean, Jesus, can we finally say it? We deserve better, Lori. I'm looking like, you know, you was wearing your daddy's suits, which is unacceptable. And trust me, It wasn't about the suits. I love a suit, honey. And there are great gender neutral tailors out there who would have hooked Lori's ass all the way up. But between the two big fedoras and the suits she was swimming in and had the nerve to have a flared ankle on these pants, even though she can't be more than five feet tall, I am telling you Jesus wept. Okay. anyway, Kim Fox back to Kim Fox. So Kim Fox ran on a progressive platform against Anita Alvarez in 2014. You will remember Anita Alvarez refused to file charges against Chicago Police Department related to their murder of Rakia Boyd and Laquan McDonald. Alvarez basically undercharged Dante Seven in that murder, where basically this Latino cop who was off duty somehow found himself beefing with some kids in a park over a noise complaint and shot this 22-year-old young woman, Rakia Boyd, in the head. Undercharging Seven meant that he went scot-free for that murder. 17-year-old Laquan McDonald was shot at least 16 times as he was walking away from Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke, allegedly for acting erratically. Alvarez refused to charge Van Dyke for over a year, 
So that's how Kim got in. She was offering something better than the corruption and cronyism that Alvarez was bringing to the table. Oh, yeah. Don't think I forgot. I didn't even scratch the surface on the police shit. Because remember when they were like torturing people and that got discovered and it took hell long to even like address? Anyways, when Kim Fox was in office, she all but eliminated cash bail, reduced incarceration rates for things like shoplifting, opened the ability of an independent agency to review cases of police misconduct when the state's attorney declined to press charges. She also helped legalize marijuana and she declined to prosecute cases of marijuana possession. And she made data on felony cases available to everybody, like the whole ass public. These are just some of the reforms that she led. But baby, let me also tell you how these police officers did not want her in there, honey. And they harassed her, death threatened her ass, and all the things. Okay? They even held a rally against her. And this one cop took her picture and rubbed it on his penis. Yes, in fucking public. So now y'all got the nerve to talk about crime in Chicago. But y'all don't want to talk about the corrupt ass police forces. And I personally take issue with that. Crime has dropped during her tenure. Now, I think what I'm having a hard time with here in hearing the news that there just wasn't enough of us loudly going to bat for the things that she was doing in office and protecting her ass from these devils. Now, elections are not for play play people. When you put somebody in power, don't you want to like keep them there and help them shape what they do? Isn't that the whole point? I'm just saying that we've done a lot of the like take somebody out as a form of accountability type shit, but definitely not enough. Hey, what y'all think about taking over more shit like the most powerful positions in state government one by one? You know, mayor, governor, state's attorney, secretary of state. I mean, she even stayed away from all that Jesse Smollett shit, which honestly, I'm not going to go into it, but that was really kind of her. And he owes her a debt of gratitude because we still don't understand what the fuck was going on there, but it's above us now. Anywho, we wish her the best and let's see if we can have her as one of our illustrious guests. See if my theory is correct here about who had her back. Now, the election for Cook County State Attorney is in 2024, so... Who got next? Other things we ain't going to do this week. More mass shootings in Texas and right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And guess who the victims were? Now, I swear to you, I am as sick of reporting about this as you are hearing about it. But not a week goes by now in America without at least one mass shooting. The most recent ones occurred in Texas, where a man literally killed five fucking people, including a nine-year-old child because the mama asked this clown to stop shooting his gun around her fucking newborn. Three women. In Atlanta, five people were shot and one was killed after a man that was experiencing a mental health crisis shot them. All of the victims are survivors. All of the victims and survivors are women. So let's add mental health to this conversation. I mean, whatever would compel you to shoot a family because they asked you to stop shooting your gun around a newborn baby? It's just beyond me. And then, of course, the shooter in Atlanta was a former member of the United States Coast Guard, and he went to the hospital to get help for anxiety and shit he was going through in his mind. And when they refused to give him some Ativan, he went the fuck off. Y'all, let me just make it plain. We need to regulate guns in this country. Not everyone and anybody should be able to get a gun. And remember, it was the Republican Party beginning in the 1980s with Ronald Reagan that completely gutted any services to help people because, you know, personal responsibility. And no, that's not a partisan thing. This is literally just the facts, folks. You can Google that shit. For now. November 2024 is coming. So what y'all gonna do? Other things we ain't gonna do this week is let this Tucker Carson lady off the fucking hook and let her rehab her image. All right. We all got the news that Tucker Carlson was unceremoniously fired from Fox News after Dominion Voting Systems went after them basically for defamation because, you know, this network allowed their hosts to continue to speak fake news about voting machines being corrupted and all kinds of other shit. That, of course, was their excuse for the reason that Donald Trump is no longer president. Now, I mean, OK, we ain't going to get into all that shit, but suffice it to say that he allegedly stole the election in 2016 and then had the nerve to try and claim it was stolen from him in 2020? Okay. 
But what I really want to focus on here is the lady who worked for his ass. And by him, I mean Tucker Carlson, Abby Grossberg. Now, she was a former producer on the show who said basically that he maintained a misogynist and toxic workplace. Okay, look, nobody deserves to be in a workplace like that. But is there any irony in the fact that she produced a toxic and misogynist show that was full of lies and then would be subjected to the same behavior? I mean, the audacity of it all ain't lost on me. And while, yes, I am about safe and fair workplaces, I have to say this. How the fuck you finna be mad about a workplace you helped enable? Now, I saw an interview with her recently, and these crocodile tears were way the fuck too much for me to bear, okay? Yes, she said. I knew that the show was toxic, but I thought I could advance my career, she said. Okay, sis. Okay, we see you. Fuck Tucker Carlson, but also fuck you too. Let's keep that same energy, okay? Let's get into the things Lady loves this week, though. Number one, the Emmett Till lady died. Carolyn Bryant, the woman who falsely accused Emmett Till of whistling at her in 1955, resulting in his death, has died. Serena's pregnant again, and baby number two is on the way. Congratulations, my sister! Missy and Shaka Khan will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, we have reported on this back in the day, but it is now official. Missy Elliott will be the first female hip-hop artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we see Shaka Khan on that list too, honey. We love to see it. Welcome back to Ladies Love Notes, where we give you all of the real about being single and dating in your 40s. This week's topic? Avoiding the vortex. Now, all right. I definitely promised y'all last week that I would give you a new love notes. I gotta be honest, I I wasn't that inspired lately. I just, I ain't been, I don't know. I mean, my love life just ain't been really on it. It it just, it's, mm, yeah, anyways. Now, lady suspects though, that this is true for a lot of us. Sometimes it rains and pours, and sometimes it's drought-like conditions in this piece. But don't get me wrong. I love sharing my hotels with y'all and I love sharing my love quandaries because often times I get notes from y'all like, hey, thank you. I thought it was just me. It ain't just you. But this time I thought I would share what I am learning about avoiding the vortex in dating. You know, like when there's a drought or when really and truly the eligible pool just ain't fucking cutting it. Look, there was a moment when it was like raining and pouring. I was talking to a few people and it was cute, you know, keeps you on your toes in a way. I mean, dating is a lot of work and I don't know how y'all polyamorous people do it because truth be told, human beings require a focus I don't always have or want to give. Now, at some point I realized I started feeling anxious and uninspired. I mean, is this really all that life is offering me right now? God just got jokes, huh? Sending me the mirror image of people who broke my heart, got too much attention from me, and time, or even worse yet, tried to get the best of me without returning the fucking favor, I'm good. I was with my girlfriends the other day, and we were talking about this, how I was bummed out about dating because it just wasn't like bearing fruit. And you know, when you're there in that headspace, even the most confident among us will be like, there has to be something wrong with me. Why am I attracting weirdos and clowns? Is it something about the way I look? something about me that I need to change? Like, what am I doing? Patriarchy is a motherfucker. Now, my girlfriend put a bird in the air and a word on my spirit that I just knew I needed to share with y'all. She was like, sis, maybe, just maybe, this is an opportunity to just do you and be dope. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but you understand what she was saying. She was like, your job isn't to try to make every motherfucker you think is even part of the way decent into your person. The goal here is actually to determine who out there is worthy of more of your time. Whoa, that was a paradigm shift. I think in dating, we're socialized to think we got to win a race of some sort. And dating in your 40s is definitely a contact sport. Your friends got kids or they're having kids or are in some way relationshiped, married or doing the long term thing. It's a lot. I used to be one of those people married for hell long and trying to cheer on my single friends to stay out there or better yet, stay in the moment and enjoy being single. 
Look, I'm sorry in advance and in retrospect, my loves, because I was giving y'all the wrong advice. But now that I know better, I promise I'm gonna do better. Here's the thing, ain't no race. And anytime you start to feel like there is, it's time to take a step back and take stock. Here's the truth. You might very well be meeting various versions of the one who couldn't commit, the one who didn't have the emotional range, the one who was a lying ass liar and shooting his blanks all over the fucking country. I'm still getting over it. You are always going to meet people who can't meet you if you catch my drift. But what a blessing to see it before it sees you. What a blessing to say no from an empowered and proactive place versus uh, I tried to make it work and even though I knew this motherfucker wasn't about shit place. What a blessing to not have trapped yourself in a relationship, situationship, or a co-parenting ship, which now you got to navigate and negotiate for the rest of your fucking life. Look at God helping us matrix the shit out of this thing. Nope, nah, son, I'm good. Appreciate you, boo, but not at this time. All the things. Yes, God, please keep your hands on me. Now that's the energy I'm on right now. I'm gonna meet people who can't meet me. And as long as I'm not wrapping myself all up in somebody else's bullshit, I am blessed. And so the fuck are you. I ain't in the vortex. I'm in the protective bubble wrap. And trust me, it's nice in here. Now, would I like to meet someone I could stand still with? Hell the fuck yeah, I would. Am I going to settle for some lesser rapper after the year I just had? Absolutely the fuck not. So dust off your shoulders, dear ones. Feel that loneliness, that anxiety, whatever it is, and tell yourself it's all good. And there's just not a need for these things anymore. We got this. 